Hello guys and welcome back to another video here on my YouTube channel. We're going to talk about the 1.4 billion password breach that was some time ago. I think it's like, you know, back in 1718 or something like that. To me, it doesn't really matter that much when it was from or how many accounts is involved. What is interesting is that I found this project here that is actually doing a um, machine learning uh, credential analysis of this um, using different kind of uh, model training in Python. And then you can see like, for example, uh, gonna give you a bit understanding of how people's passwords been changed. So having the vast amount of credentials and checking out how the password changed really just focuses on the general idea that people still don't know how to create a good and um, proper password now even so you say but this is like <clears throat> let's just say five years ago i don't really care people created that password five years ago we talk about 1.4 billion different kind of accounts taking that into consideration that would be one-fifth-ish of the world population. In, in a way, you know, it's like in a way, I know it's a count, you can have multiple accounts, but just think about it in a perspective. A fifth of the human population on the earth. I have the credentials. People can get it. It is there free. Now, for obvious reasons, I don't think it's a good idea for me to promote where the link is which is also why I cannot show you get the data part. But you can probably see things where you can find it, like you can probably see some words and stuff. And I'm really gonna stop you doing that. The general idea is just that what I have found out by running this password um, machine learning program is that I wanna show you in a text file. We could, for example, have a user at test.com and the very first password locked could, for example, be password1. Next time we lock the password in a breach, it was this. Now, and sometimes you have another go, so you say password. You're gonna guess what? Number two, right? So this kind of pattern is really the pattern we will see. Now, um, I scroll through a few thousand, you know, passwords that I saw. I also saw a lot of email addresses. And I would say like, depending on how you use this data, you can either be on the good end or the bad end, right? I consider myself to be, you know, both as a teacher, but also uh, as an ethical teacher. I also consider myself as a very ethical person, I don't really want to go out and misuse any of this information. Now, what you could do is you could do credential stuffing. <clears throat> credential stuffing attack is basically just where you take a lot of valid paired email addresses and passwords and just try and hack your way in. Uh, <clears throat> trying all different kind of combinations, right? Um, on different services, not combination of passwords and email addresses. That's why I called it paired. So maybe we should just say, just try all the passwords, right? So that's really just the way it is. Um, so what? So let's assume that you get, let's say, uh, sixty-five thousand three hundred Yahoo dot com emails. So you get emails and password. This is five years old. What are the chances that one of them work? Like, let's say how many works percentage wise. I, I do not really want to guess because I don't know. Um, but taking into the consideration that people have a really bad tendency to create the password using these kind of patterns. This kind of length is also what I see the most uh, from like, f 
all from like six to 12 characters. That is what I see. I would say like it's more rare to see 12, more like six to nine ish. That is the range that I typically see in the password overview that is generated with this machine learning Python script, right? So what did I learn and what do I think? And I think that even though that this is very old, consider, considering that the internet is, is on a constant in expansion, even though this is old five years-ish, you know, there's a pretty good chance that like, probably 20, 25% of all of it still works in some way or another. You can also just go ahead and, you know, guess what is the user's next password. They maybe change these passwords. So if I would create a program, and assuming we take this account here, just a, something I created out of, you know, um, random, um, I would cr definitely write a small Python, uh, Python program where I would instruct it to say, this user is very interesting. Either use pass, use a special character in the middle, the word and the number, and just generate a lot of you know different kind of passwords using this you know method. And <clears throat> following that kind of pattern, you know, uh, I could get a word list of let's say 500 different passwords that could be possible candidates for this kind of user because I figured a way within there already breach passwords to recognize recognize that there is a pattern and that pattern is right there for you and this is exactly what this machine learning um, script will do for you so when you've been running that you know it takes it took me like 20 minutes or something like that um, in a virtual machine with four cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM um, you will get all whoa many files <laughs> you can just open them and you can see people's email addresses and so on now I know it's probably tempting to check out whether you can find another person's password in the list and I would say if you do that please be specific when you do a lookup so do a specific lookup for the exact match so you don't expose other people's passwords and potential still using uh, that kind of password. So that would be pretty bad. In some occasions, you know, the passwords are uh, social security numbers and taking that into consideration, that is actually a part in Europe of what we call the GDPR um, law. I know that's different in the Americans uh, in, in, in America, but the GDPR law is pretty serious and we should take it pretty serious here in Europe. So <clears throat> I think I'm gonna, you know, end the video by saying that there is many things that could be found by looking through 1.4 billion passwords. Um, it is a lot of passwords, a lot of email addresses and they all uh, are there from some sort of breach and that breach is something you could definitely learn something from so and um, i apologize for the vagueness of this video it is a sensitive topic not really something that i wish to expose too much um too clear in a way so you can find well, you will find the results anyway. There's plenty of clues, but I'm, I'm just gonna, I just don't want to share the uh, actual links with you because it is some torrent, and mm, you know, it is kind of on the the edge of what I would consider. Can I do this? Definitely not something I'm gonna share with my students or anything. I I, I am doing some some look up for them sometimes, but it's for educational purposes, and it's gonna be their own private email addresses only. <clears throat> and they would of course need to accept that it would be showed to the class. Okay, so really hope you learned something from this video and I will I will give updates about this when I analyze the data and I will definitely give a talk, probably even write a paper on my website. And I just wanna promote my website one more time. It is called securityinmind.com. On here you find different kind of tools. Uh, you can go ahead and check the SQL injection learner and the past traversal learner. 
also have articles, and the first article is already there. It's a small article about uh, the cause of insecurity in web pages, and this is this is what I call a small article. So you've got the abstract introduction, the cause of insecurity, different things. This is not a uh, not covering every kind of single insecurity. It's just a you know one angle of it. I will create more mini articles and definitely gonna create an article about the password issues. Also go to the home page, you can check out, you know, an overview of different kind of videos I've uploaded. More than 30 pages you can browse through. And if you wish to, um, I definitely also have a have a page called guides which has a 404. So I think I'm going to remove that link next time you see it. So it's not going to be there. All right. So I hope you learned something for this video. I want to see you again online and have a really nice Easter, late Easter, early Easter, whatever Easter you have. Have a good one. If you don't have it, have a really good day. I'm going to see you again online. And don't hesitate asking any questions. I'm going to get back to you as fast as I can. See you out there.